When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious... <laughs> Today, we jump into our DeLorean and take a trip back to the past to take a look at Back to the Future, The Ride, one of the most beloved extinct attractions from the history of Universal Studios. We will also be taking a look at the merchandise associated to The Ride and the films that inspired it. On July 3rd, 1985, Back to the Future was released in theaters. Almost 40 years later, it has become one of the most beloved film franchises of all time and considered one of the best films ever made. The film was even entered into the United States Library of Congress in 2007 as part of its National Film Registry. While we will be talking about Universal Studios, this story starts over at Disneyland. Back in 1986, Steven Spielberg was a creative consultant for Universal. He was meeting with Peter Alexander, the executive producer of Universal Studios Florida, and recalled how he had just recently rode Star Tours over at Disneyland. His friend George Lucas told Spielberg that Universal could never do a Star Tours. This emboldened Spielberg to ask Alexander to see if they could create an attraction based on Back to the Future. Spielberg had also recently seen the Kong Encounter at Universal Studios Hollywood and was impressed at what they had pulled off. Alexander said that the Florida Project, which was at that point dead as a doornail, came back to life. The initial planning officially started in 1988. The original concept for the ride called for a roller coaster attraction. However, it was decided that the fast motion made it too difficult to tell a cohesive story. They eventually settled on a motion simulator ride. The vehicles would be modeled after the DeLorean car that was featured in the films. The film would be projected onto a large dome-shaped IMAX screen. The manufactured company Intamin would be contracted to build the attraction. Boss Film Studios would be contracted to create the Ride film. The studio was headed by Academy Award winning visual effects artist Richard Edlin. After working on the project for over a year, Universal would go in a different direction and hire Douglas Trumbull to complete the final Ride film. Trumbull himself was a pioneer in the world of movie special effects. Having been part of the optical effects for 2001 A Space Odyssey, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Blade Runner. The film would be shot on 70mm and projected onto an 84-foot Omnimax screen. This was one of the first Omnimax films to use stop-motion animation. An interesting fact about the Ride film is that it was written by Peyton Reed, who would later go on to direct the Ant-Man films for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When guests entered the ride, they would be seated into one of 12 DeLorean cars on hydraulic motion bases. Each vehicle was capable of holding up to eight passengers. The configuration of the ride vehicles would give the impression that you were the only vehicle in front of the ride film. However, if you looked to your right or left, you could see the other DeLoreans in your row. There were two domes built with 12 DeLoreans each, 24 in total. This ensured that if one dome went down due to technical difficulties, the ride could still continue operations using the remaining dome. In 1989, Universal would officially announce the opening date of 1991 for both Universal Studios Florida and Hollywood. Florida's version would officially open on May 2nd, 1991. The Hollywood version of the ride would be delayed to June 4th, 1993, due to some foundation issues found during the building of the attraction. The ride would also act as an opening day attraction at Universal Studios Japan in March of 2001. The story of the ride would have you entering the Institute of Future Technology. Hello, and thanks for coming to the Institute of Future Technology. On behalf of Dr. Emmett Brown, Institute founder and chief inventive officer, we hope that you have a very pleasant visit. Headed by Doc Brown, with Christopher Lloyd returning, the ride would act as a somewhat sequel to the original trilogy of films, but it is still contested if it is considered canon. While in the queue, you would be presented with clips from the films, a history of the Institute, and other inventions by Doc Brown. Doc Brown invites guests to volunteer for his newest invention, an eight-passenger DeLorean, in order to travel one day into the future. Everything goes wrong when Biff Tannen from 1955, played again by Tom Wilson, 
stows away on a time machine, and starts causing problems within the Institute. Okay. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Huh? What are you looking at, butthead? Wait a second. Who the suckers Doc Brown conned into his time travel experiment? He locks Doc in his office and steals one of the DeLoreans. Don't worry, Doc. I'll go back. And in style. But first, I'm going to take a little joy ride. Doc asks the guests to use a DeLorean to follow Biff and bump him back into the current time period. The trip takes us to 2015 Hill Valley, with an appearance of a styrofoam cup left on the miniature set, an ice cave, and prehistoric times that include a run-in with a T-Rex and a lava river. Eventually, the guests are able to bump Biff back to the current time, as Back in Time by Huey Lewis plays in the background. In total, the ride cost $60 million to produce. On September 7, 2006, Universal announced that the ride would be closing in Orlando on March 30, 2007. Rumors at the time said that the ride would be replaced by either a Fast and the Furious or Simpsons attraction. Eventually, it would be announced that Simpsons the Ride would take the attraction's place. The Hollywood version of the attraction would get a more ceremonious send-off with Christopher Lloyd and producer Bob Gale in attendance to count down to the closing on September 3rd, 2007. Japan would have the attraction for the longest, closing on May 31st, 2016. A full year after the future date of 2015 in the film itself. The Simpsons ride began construction in May of 2007, with the remaining pieces of Back to the Future sent to the scrapyard. The new ride would open on May 15th, 2008, and remains open to this day. There are a few Easter eggs to the original attraction, the main one being a pre-show video showing how Doc Brown lost the Institute of Future Technology to Krusty the Clown. In Japan, the ride was replaced with Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem on April 21st, 2017. In 2009, Universal would release the attraction video as a bonus feature on the DVD set for Back to the Future. This version of the ride video is slightly edited and extremely compressed. Future generations can experience Back to the Future the Ride through a special expansion pack that was released for Minecraft that goes through the different rides in the history of the Universal Studios theme parks. The Institute of Future Technology also lives on in a specially themed escape room that is available at Universal Studios Orlando. While the ride was open, each attraction had their own dedicated gift shop selling various types of memorabilia. This includes keychains, cups, shot glasses, t-shirts, toy cars, pins, and much, much more. When the ride opened at Universal Studio Hollywood in 1993, the fast food chain Carl's Jr. had a sweepstakes promotion allowing you to win a trip to Universal Studios. Even after over 15 years of being gone from the parks, Back to the Future still has a significant presence within the Universal Studio theme parks. The main cast, Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Tom Wilson, and more are still regulars at conventions all across the United States. Back to the Future The Ride is looked back on with fondness by those who were able to experience it, and a sense of wonder and longing for those who were not. While we may be almost 10 years into the real future from 2015, the entire franchise continues to be timeless for generations to come. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into Back to the Future The Ride. Please leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and let us know in the comments below some other topics you would like us to discuss. And as always, keep on collecting.